Now you don't have to clap every time I come up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, David. That's beautiful. It's a good one. I want to attempt to share that story of winning that lady to Christ. When he inquired about that little lady to the family, they told her that she was dying in a nursing home. And, uh, he asked if he could go see her. She, they said, I don't know if she'll let you come or not because she told us, all of the family, no, don't nobody come see me. I don't want nobody there. But they asked her, they called her and said, can Tim come see you? She said, yeah, send Tim. Isn't <laughs> that something? Yeah. God had an appointed time That's right. for her salvation. And this morning I'm preaching on jewels in the crown of God, God's jewels. You who are God's people are, are the jewels of God. He puts great value upon every person. And it's all connected with winning and doing God's bidding for Him. God's chosen by, by His ways. In the eyes of man it may be foolish, but God chose simple human instrumentality to be a part of every soul that's saved. Isn't that marvelous? Alright, turn in the Word of God to uh, the book of Isaiah chapter 62. Isaiah chapter 62. Stand with me if you would for the reading of God's Word. God's Jewel. For Zion's sake I will not hold my peace, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness and the salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth. And the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness and all kings thy glory. And thou shalt be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord shall name. Thou shalt also be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of thy God. Verse 6. I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace, day nor night, ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence. You who know the Lord, you're not to keep silent about right. what you have. Uh, you know why? Because you're the jewel in God's crown. Mm -hmm. The most important thing in the world is to keep people out of the regions of the damned. Right. And without our help, they're bound for the wrong <clears throat> destiny at the end of life's journey. Heavenly Father, thank you for the precious Word of God. Thank you for wonderful salvation. Thank you for people that love you, that respect you, that honor you, that obey you that are your servants, Lord. Thank you for the wonderful instruction about how God appreciates each and every one that's doing His work. I pray now, Lord, that this message would be a blessing. And I pray that you would bring a serious, solemn attitude toward our minds and our hearts about not only our relationship with you, but Lord, bringing others into a relationship with you. I pray you'd strengthen us, have your way in this message. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Please be seated. For Zion's sake I will not hold my peace. For Jerusalem's sake I will not rest. It seems that a lot of Christians are sinning 
on their blessed assurance in getting a lot of rest. That's all right to sit on your assurance as long as we're putting the go in our feet with the gospel. We can't afford to be silent because God is depending upon our witness. Souls out there lost are depending upon your witness. <coughs> I will remind you that that little lady that's in hospice, and she's not only already passed from last week, is ready to go with the Lord. Amen. And that may have been her only hope. Right. Tim has witnessed to the family. The family isn't saved. Pray that his influence will go beyond that to those other precious family members. But it's one thing to know that God last Sunday afternoon reached down on a deathbed right. and plucked the soul out of the burning yes, sir. flames of hell. Amen. That there was somebody there that could speak for the Lord right. and not keep silent. Silence could be a death sentence. And so often we Christians are silent when we should be speaking for the Lord. And for the sake of souls, for the sake of the Lord and His sacrifice, we should not rest until salvation and righteousness comes. And it's going, and the whole world is going to see it. You know, when, when, when you're living for God and you're drawing people to Christ, the whole world is going to take note. There's something very special. God says you are. God says in that you are the, the royal diadem, which is a diamond in the, in the hand of God and the royal Royal, you, you're going to get blessings and righteousness is going to go forth. Salvation and the lamp of God is going to come into hearts and burns. The Gentiles are going to see it. And the kings are going to see glory in this. And thou shalt be called by a new name. Listen, God's got a new name for every one of us. We'll know one day that little white stone and the name that God's going to give us all. Remember, He changed Jacob's name to Israel. That was the blessing of God. And I heard Brother uh, Brother Wilson a long time ago bring a beautiful message about the little white stone with the name of the believers on it. That God's going to give you a stone. He's going to give you a new name one of these days. I, I, we need one, don't we? Amen. Amen. One that will identify you for everlasting time and eternity. And God is going to do that for us. But in the meanwhile, God is saying that uh, it's going to take note. And the mouth of the Lord is going to name that name. And thou shalt be a crown of glory in the, in the hand of the Lord. Would you rather be a crown or a thorn? You can be either. You can be a crown of glory in the hand of God by serving Him or ignoring the Lord Jesus and being a fresh thorn in His brow. It's up to us how we treat the Lord. But God said, Thou shalt also be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of thy God. <coughs> you make up God's jewels. You'll see it in a few moments. But God goes on to say, I've set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem. And that was back then, a watchman upon the walls. But you know what? You have a Jerusalem too. Your Jerusalem is where you are. You are watchmen upon the walls. God warns us in, 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 in the book of, of Ezekiel that if we fail to warn the wicked from the wicked way, those same wicked people will die in their iniquity, but yet their blood will be required at the watchman's hand. We must give warning. Right. 
I want to share something very special in Scripture in just a moment. But I set these watchmen upon the walls which shall never hold their peace. Watchmen never hold their peace. Right. We're not supposed to stay silent. Right. We're supposed to give out the living word of God. And the watchman that's going to warn the lost should never hold their peace when they have opportunity to speak. When? Day nor night. Our responsibility to look for souls is 24 hours every single day, day and night. And if it's like the Apostle Paul did, it's with many tears and with many temptations. But he was faithful in serving God and producing for the Lord. And then that great statement, Ye that make mention of the Lord. How many of you make mention of the Lord? Right. All the time. You pray to Him. You, you talk about Him. You come to church. You read your Bible. You make mention of the Lord. Here's the instruction from God. Keep not silence. Because your silence can be deadly to those souls in your presence that you're silent to. Oh, what about that? Oh, please go with me in the scripture back to Proverbs chapter 24. Proverbs chapter 24. And I want to read verse 10 through 12. If thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. But if thou forbear to deliver them that are drawn unto death, and those that are ready to be slain, and if thou sayest, Behold, we knew it not, doth not he that pondereth the heart consider it? And he that keepeth thy soul Doth not he know it? And shall not he render to every man according to his works? Alright? This uh, passage of scripture mentions three things that's going to be a problem. If we faint, number one. If we forbear to deliver those that are lost, number two. Now, if you fail to win the lost, and number three, if we say we didn't know anything about it, if you plead ignorance to silence, right. he that ponders your heart, he that saved your soul from hell, he that delivered you out of the yoke of bondage and out of the prison house of the devil. You think God doesn't know? God sees every opportunity we miss. He hears the silence of believers. Right. He hears every time you're a witness. God writes it all down. He don't only have all seeing eyes and all knowledge. He has big ears from heaven. He hears your conversation. He puts people in your path to whom you can witness. He hears every testimony and every witness that you give. He sees every gospel track you leave on the table. He hears, and he sees, and he knows. And yet, Christian, just how many people do we miss when opportunity is there? God doesn't hold us responsible for opportunities that are not there. You can't witness where you aren't. But where you are, God said you're a watchman. You need to meet that responsibility. 
So if you faint in the day of adversity, you're weak. Uh, you know what? It, it's, it's not good for people to faint. How many of you know that? Just faint. I've told this story before about my brother-in-law when his wife was ill with multiple sclerosis and, and she went to the bathroom and she fell and went to the floor and she was bleeding and when my brother-in-law walked in and saw her, whoo, <laughs> fell right on top of her. Boy, that's a hell. Amen. Somebody laying in the floor bleeding and you faint right on top of them. What kind of a help are you when you faint? Well, God doesn't want us to faint either. Right. Be not weary in well-doing. In due season you shall reap. If what? If you faint not. Right. There's too many Christians fainting. Right. Giving up. I mean, when you faint, you're out of it. What good can we if we faint? But listen, if thou forbear, that means forbear means not to do it. If you forbear to deliver them that are drawn unto death. You see those unsaved people out there are drawn to death. They're under the sentence of death and hell without hope. And that sentence will always remain over them. Until they're saved. And God will never give up. And neither should we. But we need to deliver them. You say, well, preacher, I can't save anybody. God didn't say save them. He said deliver them. Can I tell you? When there's an emergency and a car wreck on the highway and lives are in Danger and somebody picks up the phone and dials 911. Just from giving a 911 call, you have delivered them if they're saved from that accident. We need to be dialing 911. We need to be giving out the warning. We can deliver folks. God does a saving. All He wants us to do is to, is to put forth the effort to give out the message. Whether it's telling somebody about it or showing them personally how or putting them in touch. Some way, you will be the instrument of delivery for the unsaved person. Like, like my son Tim. What did he do? Nobody else was going to see her. The family couldn't help her. I didn't hear of her running into any Christians. The family was asked to stay alone. Tim had a burden. He just spoke up. He looked for an opportunity. And they called her and they said, yeah, send Tim. Because you know what? She liked him because of a conversation when he was with her. He was kind to her. He worked on her house to do her favor when he wasn't even hardly able to do it himself. He went to the nursing home. He went down the hallway and got her a glass, of a, a, a cup of ice water. He came back and told her, you go check out. Don't you want to know that when you get there, that Jesus will meet you and Jesus will greet you. Sure. Just what did he do? He did nothing but obey and follow and be kind and witness and God did the work. When he said one day I'll be laying there she said, I'll be up there watching over you. I'll send water to you. Aren't you glad that we as believers have that well of water springing up within our soul? And if you drink of the water that He gives, you'll never thirst. Right. Wow. There's nothing like a good drink of cold water on a hot day. 
to a parched tongue. Wow. Water you never dreamed of. And to know that by giving out the water of God's word, you become royal diadems in the hand of God. You become jewels in the crown of God. It, it's, so, it's so wonderful. Let me go to the book right quick and to Malachi and let me read you. This is, this is absolutely awesome. In Malachi, now don't worry, I'm not getting on chapter 10. That's for tithing. Okay, I'm not getting there. I want us to look at verse 16. Because God's plea, Malachi is the book that was written by the prophet Malachi to the people of God to get them back right with God. Between uh, the, the book of Malachi and the coming and the birth of Jesus was 400 years. Israel had been rebelling against God. This old book is God says, but you said, where people argued with God and disagreed with God. And it reminds me so much of the time that we're in now where people will question God and question the Bible and not agree with God and try to make up their own rules and regulations and deny what God says. Let God be truth and all men a liar. And God tells some things here. People would not listen. People would not respond. People were not thinking upon the name of God. They were disobedient. They were disrespectful. And this last plea coming out from God in verse 16 says, When then they that feared the Lord, and by the way, that's what's missing in Christian lives today. We think we can live like we want and there's no ramifications. Right. We think we can make our own way and do our own things and nothing's a big deal. But the fear of God is missing. The very beginning of wisdom is the fear of God. Anyone that's not afraid of God is <clears throat> very foolish. <clears throat> no wisdom at all. Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another. Now, they begin to talk about, hey, we're not treating God right. We're not doing right. Our parents weren't right. Our, our nation wasn't right. They, they got it because God refuted their arguments and over time brought conviction to the children of Israel because Jesus is, is coming. And even when He came, then he came to his own, and his own received him not. There's a time for the Jews to come back to God, and that's after the rapture. Right now, Jesus is working on his bride, amen, amen. which is all of the saved, born-again believers and for that's going to be taken away at his coming. The bridegroom's coming for the bride. <coughs> Salvation needs to be now to those that are... They're waiting for the coming of the Lord, serving Him faithfully. It says here that they that feared the Lord spake one to another. You know, if, if you don't fear the Lord, you know, oh, I bet they're asking questions. Hey, what have we done? Where have we gone wrong? How could we improve? Uh, when He comes, will He find faith with us? Will he find us waiting and working and watching and ready? What about, well, how is our lives pleasing God? They begin to talk one to another about their lives and about their service for the Lord. And those who began to do that, it said the Lord hearkened and heard it. And the book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and thought upon I'm here to tell you today that you can either think about God and you can contemplate and, and meditate and, and, and get close to God and let your life be powerful with God or you can forget about it and walk in the flesh and do your own thing and treat God as though He never existed. If that's the way you want to treat God, but those that feared the Lord, they begin to think on His name. They begin to talk they began to inventory their heart and the Lord hearkened and he heard it and he wrote a special book Amen. of remembrance right. to 
those that love him enough to think about his name and talk about him. And God said, They shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts. In that day, when I make up my jewels, I will spare them as a man spared his own son that served him. God will spare. All the judgment that we deserve will be for, foregone. Then shall you return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between them that serveth God and them that serveth Him not. People who do not serve God may never enter into the pearly gates of God, into the celestial city of God. He didn't promise everybody a mansion in, in the city. He promised us a place in heaven, which is a new heaven or a new earth. It's going to be a privilege to enter into those pearly gates. And those that do, that whose lives don't serve God, they may not have the right to the tree of life to get into the city which is on the top floor by the crystal river that flows from the throne of God. I don't know about you. I may make the city to have a, a home there or I may be on the new earth or the new heaven. Wherever Jesus is, that's heaven for me. But I sure want the privilege of walking through those pearly gates and going up to the crystal river of fountain flowing yeah. eternally. I want to walk on those transparent streets of gold. Amen? It's so important to have that privilege. God's preparing a place for every person according to their work and according to their sacrifice, according to their service for the Lord, according to what they deserve, according to what they chose. So you see what's so important for preachers to preach to people? So important that we're able to speak up for God, not only to those that... Uh, uh, because God's depending on us to win, to deliver those souls from death. Amen. If we forbear to do that, if we keep silent, the, the Word of God is very, very clear. We ought to be giving out the warning. In closing, Luke chapter 12. In the meanwhile, when they were gathered together an innumerable multitude of people insomuch that they strode one upon another he began to say unto his disciples first of all now Jesus is talking to his disciples beware ye of the leaven of the Pharisees which is hypocrisy for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed neither hid that shall not be known. Therefore, whatsoever ye have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light, and that which ye have spoken in the, in the ear in closets shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. He said, When I say unto you, my friends, now Jesus is saying the first statements to his disciples. Then Jesus turns to that multitude that's crowded in. And now he's addressing that multitude as well as his disciples. And here's what he said. And I say unto you, my friends. Yes, Jesus called sinners his friend. You're not going to win sinners if you're unfriendly. says, yes, I say to you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body 
and after that have no more that they can do. Now that's pretty good advice, isn't it? Uh -huh. But listen to this. But I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Fear him which after he hath killed hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. Fear God. We are whom God is depending upon. In that day of judgment, He's going to come when He makes up His jewels. He's going to reward those that feared Him, that obeyed Him, that thought upon His name, that helped with the sacrifice Jesus made of giving His body and His blood the salvations of the sin of the world, those whom He loved enough to die, that we may be reconciled to God the Father, He wants us to deliver those souls. Right. By giving out the warning. Because we are watchmen upon the walls. You're to watch over the souls that God puts in your path. And understand how important that it is because we can either be a jewel in the crown of God or we can be disobedient and be a fresh thorn in his side and at the judgment and we see those awful crowds of people when death and hell deliver up their dead and they're hurled and cast away into the lake of fire and to know if we stood there and we saw that and we'll be wise because remember we'll have our glorified bodies we'll have our minds no wonder that God's going to have to wipe away all tears I believe beloved we'll all stand there in tears to be wiped away by God with the hand of God for our failures when we see what we could have done, what we could have been, yeah. who we could have saved, right. how much greater our lives could have been. But it wasn't because we did not forbear. Right. Even to deliver our own responsibility, let alone the responsibility of delivering souls out of the regions of the damned. Let's take this to heart. Amen. I'd rather be a jewel in the crown of God. Right. I want to be a royal diadem in the hand of God. Hey, I don't claim to be a great soul winner. I've had the privilege of winning a lot of people to Christ. Nobody else could, but it wasn't me. You know who it was? I am only an instrument of love in the hand of God to deliver souls out of the regions of hell. And so are you. So are you. Jewels? You're a jewel. You know what I suggest? I suggest if you're a jewel, you start to sparkle. Right. Amen? All right. Let's stand up. Smile. You can start sparkling by a smile.